I am currently running uh, an animal sanctuary uh, on a farm in Oxfordshire, a farm that was not so long ago a beef producing farm. My father used to run um, livestock markets and, he, and I used to work, work there as a boy. I used to help with the calves. I was a calf at the time myself, uh, maybe sort of nine, ten years old. So that was the world I was born into. My grandfather was a butcher. So I got quite heavily into shooting and fishing and all these things. Then I joined the uh, army. But uh, one of the other major things in my life was the fact that I'm gay. I mean, joining the army at the time is illegal to be gay in the army. And so, yeah, I was naturally attracted to those things that I thought would conceal that. Anything that could be perceived as being manly um, was, was, a, was a useful tool for me in my young mind to just to survive, I guess. When I left the army, I discovered the gay scene, basically, in London, and then I just sort of dived headfirst into that. And so for me, you know, it was the drugs, it was the clubs, the sex. It's a very ego kind of driven kind of life. Um, I've realized, or I now realize that, that that's pretty much what, what I was. Very strong, very sort of army officer, people would relate to me like that. It's kind of fun when you're young and you're in your mid-twenties, but then you start to edge into your thirties and you're still doing it, and your mid-thirties, and you head towards the end of it, and it starts to seriously affect your health. I was introduced then, uh, quite early, to sort of plant medicines and communities of people, which I guess Orwell well, would have called them sort of, oh, those hippies. And I suddenly started to kind of enter that world, which I now am very grateful to and proud to be part of. This sort of healing process started then, I think, out of desperation. And I was going to buy a place in Brixton because it had a little patio. And there was this cottage up at this village locally, and I just went to have a look at this garden. And I had a moment, I had one of those, you know, those moments in life where you just, it just sort of did something to me, moved me so much. I am currently running an animal sanctuary on a farm in Oxfordshire. Yeah, a farm that was not so long ago a beef producing farm. And uh, I look after 43 animals now here. And I'm renting fields that, uh, that are here off donations from people and organizations that are supporting me now. And we're existing. And uh, it seems everybody is happy that I'm here. And it's just a, it's an incredible thing. There's so many reasons to do what I'm doing here. Apart from just saving animals from, from, from being in the food chain, I think there's so many areas of the human experience that this also shines light on. I think sanctuaries are so important generally, but I think just sort of offering an alternative way of interacting with animals, because you know, animal agriculture is entrenched in the, the narrative that domination you know, it's not just the animals being completely dominated with any sense of their agency taken away from them for convenience, they're just made into products. But it's also the way the land's used as well. You know, every inch of grass has to be available for the animals to eat the grass off and all this sort of stuff. The best thing that we can possibly do is if we really want to change things, firstly and foremostly, is work on ourselves. If we really want to have some influence, Otherwise, just cause derision uh, and, uh, and conflict. That's the worst thing we can do for animals. So the process of healing really is to disentangle from that and find peace. Mm -hmm.